Do you remember this? And people are fundamentally good. Okay, so Pope Francis did it again. Just have a look at this video. Tutte le religioni sono un cammino per arrivare a Dio. Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Sono, dirò una comparazione, sono come diverse lingue, diverse idiomi per arrivare lì. Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. E come Dio è Dio per tutti, noi siamo tutti figli di Dio. And if God is God for all, then we're all sons and daughters of God. Ma il mio Dio è più importante del tuo. But my God is more important than your God. È vero quello? Is that true? C'è un solo Dio lì. E noi sono idiomi, cammino, lingue per arrivare a Dio. There's only one God and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to uh, arrive at God. Qualcuno è schi, qualcuno è musulmano, qualcuno è indi, qualcuno è cristiano. Indo, sono diversi cammini. There, there are different paths. Understood? <laughs> so his message sounded like, hey, we're all God's children. It doesn't really matter which path you take, right? As long as you're sincere, you'll get to God. Peaceful and reassuring, right? I am not so sure. So let's explore this from a true Christian's perspective. Because, well, there's a tiny bit more to it. First up, let's talk about interfaith dialogue. I think it's awesome when you can see people from various religions um, that have real and respectful conversations. If we really think about it, Jesus was all about reaching out to people from different religious backgrounds. I mean, just look at how he treated the Samaritan woman at the well. He didn't just start with, hey, your religion is wrong. No, first he met with her where she was. Then he spoke with her and then gently led her to the truth. As Christians, I think we should do the same. We believe in showing love and respect for everyone, no matter their faith. That's part of our foundation. However, we can't just water down the truth because we want to make everybody feel good. God's truth still matters. The Bible specifically says in John 14 verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That means that there's only one small path to salvation and it's only through Jesus Christ. Now, about this idea that all the religions are just different paths to the same God. It sounds nice and inclusive, but just let's be real. From a Christian's perspective, not all religions lead to the same destination. In fact, the Bible gives us clear guidance on how to follow God. There are specific truths we must hold on to, like the Sabbath, the second coming of Jesus, the three angels' messages, and many more. These aren't just one of many ways to God. These are God's way of showing us the only path to eternal life. For example, you can think of it as a scavenger hunt. We might reach the finishing line while following paths different to the one given to us. However, in doing so, we will not have solved the clues or collected the required hidden items. For that reason, I don't think we can be victorious. In the same way, we might end up knocking on heaven's door, but we will not be allowed in unless we have followed the correct path to arrive there. God's word is our own roadmap and while he loves everyone and desires everyone to be saved, he's given us clear instructions on how to get there. So while we respect other religions, we can't pretend they are all pointing to the same truth. So I see the Bible as our one and only spiritual GPS. But here's where things get interesting. 
Some people might think that saying your religion is the only true one might be arrogant. I get that, but just think about it. If we truly believe that God has revealed himself in a unique way through Jesus and the Bible, isn't it our responsibility to share that truth? It's not about being better than anyone. It's about sharing our core beliefs with everyone. What would be God's point in giving us clear instructions and accepting us in heaven after we ignore them? I would love to see your point of view in the comments. Of course, if... And let's not forget, sharing the truth doesn't mean that we are forcing it on anyone. It's about inviting people to experience Jesus and the truth of scriptures. Christians believe that the truth is freeing. And when you find something that gives you life and hope, you can't help but want others to experience it as well. Okay, quick break. Let's talk about courage. Per il dialogo interreligioso fra i giovani ci vuole coraggio. In order to have interreligious dialogue among young people, it takes courage. Perché l'età giovanile è l'età del coraggio because youth is, is really the time when, when they're the time of courage in our lives. Ma tu puoi avere questo coraggio per fare cose che non ti aiuteranno, per esempio, no? But you can also have this courage and use it for things that really don't help you. Ma tu puoi avere il coraggio per andare avanti or, nel dialogo. Or you can use that courage in order to move forward and to engage in dialogue. In this video, I just showed you Pope Francis said something along the lines of it takes courage to engage in interfaith dialogue. Okay, I totally agree. It takes guts to sit down with people who think differently and have meaningful conversations without getting defensive. But here's the thing. It takes even more courage to stand up for the truth. Nowadays, it is extremely easy to fall into the trap of just going with the flow, accepting that all beliefs are equally valid. However, true Christians believe that standing for biblical truth is part of our mission, even when it's unpopular, which is mostly the case. And to be honest, I think that's where real courage comes in. We are all called to share the unique message God has given us about Jesus, the Sabbath, the state of the dead, and the soon return of Christ. This message is extremely urgent. It's not about saying we are right, you're wrong. It's about inviting others to experience God's living word. So let's wrap this up with something I find really powerful. In the book of Revelation, there's a special message given to God's people, the three angels' messages. These messages aren't just for Christians, they are for the whole world. They are a call to worship only God as a creator, to turn away from false teachings and to prepare for Jesus' return. This isn't just one message among many, but the final call before Jesus comes back. And as a true Christian, I strongly believe that it's our job to share the truth with the world. So yeah, let's be part of interfaith conversations. Let's listen, respect and love people from every background. But let's not lose sight of the fact that God has given us a specific mission. We are called to point people to the truth in Jesus, even when it's tough. That's the real courage our world needs today. Honestly, I can't imagine the martyrs of the past enduring such suffering and sacrificing their lives for the truth, knowing they could have chosen an easier path, like those who followed pagan beliefs or other religions of their time. It makes me wonder if we can reach God through any belief system, why was Jesus' sacrifice necessary? Why would he endure the cross if any path would lead us to the same destination? Just think about it, my friend. The time is extremely short. In case you didn't notice, there's a big spiritual battle raging all around us today. And the most dangerous part? The black palms on the chessboard are dressed in white, making it harder than ever to follow the truth. Tutte le religioni 
son un camino para arrivare a Dio. Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. <laughs>